Hello Bookworms, Tibra's Den. My name is Whitney and today I have my July TBR for you guys. I'm going to be having my youngest dog pick. She's going to be turning two on July 17th so I thought this would be a fun kind of thing to do with her. Um, I've been wanting to have one of the animals pick my TBR for a while because I see others, you know, have that prompt in their TBR game and I think it's so much fun. So since it's her birthday, she's going to be jumping in here. Um, I have eight books that I need to read. So those are already automatically on the TBR. And then I have four books that I want to add in regardless. So they're not priorities, but one of them is part of a series that I've just been obsessed with lately. Uh, well, three of them are. And at least one of them I'm going to be reading right off the bat. And then we'll see about the other ones. Uh, and so then that leaves, there's 12 books that I'm going to be having her choose from. I'm going to do them in pairs. And so there'll be six books that she chooses initially. Depending <laughs> on what she chooses, I might do a second round with the remaining six books and add three others just to give some of the ones that I'm really rooting for a chance to get on this TBR. Um, but it just depends on her. If she chooses the ones I want, I kind of want a shorter TBR this month because I've really been pushing myself the last couple months. Um, so we shall see if she's nice to me or not. Um, like I said, I might do a bigger TBR if I if she doesn't choose the books that I really, really want. So we're going to do the picks from her first, and then I'll go through all the books and talk about them. So let me get her all set up, and I'll be right back. All right, so we have Anya here. Her birthday is the 17th of July. She will be two years old this year. She's such a good dog. She really is a sweetheart. Um, and so I already have the first two books set up. I've tried this a couple times, and she's kind of gone to one side consistently. Um, so I kind of adjusted a little bit, and we will see if that has worked at all, because I want it to be kind of more fair. I'm also trying to show you guys, uh, so let's see what she does this round, but I think either way, if she sticks to one side, we're just gonna go with this round, so... Um, because one round she did one this side consistently, the other round she did this side consistently. Um, so we'll just kind of see what she does here. Um, but let's go ahead and release. Release. <laughs> so she picked Kai K.E., um, which is one I'm really excited about. So I am not mad that she picked this. And Where the Crawdads Seem, I did want to read it before the movie comes out. But it comes out July 15th, and we probably won't go watch it right away. So I could probably read this in August and then watch the movie. So that's not a huge deal. Next, we have two Nora Roberts books. So Midnight Bayou is a reread for me, but it's one that I haven't read in a while, so it's not as fresh in my mind. And then Genuine Lies is one that I hauled recently, um, so I've never actually read it. And I do want to get to this one. So we'll put that one kind of there if it will stay and then midnight by you there sit okay and then we get her treats and release it's okay there you go <laughs> so she was having trouble it was kind of being pushed back to the book um but she did pick genuine lies so we're going to be reading this one, which I'm excited for since I haven't read it before, and it does sound really interesting. So next up, we have two Cinderella retellings. So we have Cinder, which is like a sci-fi kind of Cinderella retelling, and then we have If the Shoe Fits, which is more of like a contemporary romance. So we'll go ahead and put these up here and see which ones she picks. So we'll do that and that. And release. Good job. So she picked Cinder, which I'm really excited about. I have heard mixed reviews on this one, but it just sounds so intriguing to me. And I've also heard really good things about the series as a whole. Um, and so I, I'll be in one of two camps, obviously, but I think I'm going to really enjoy this one. So we'll go ahead and add that. 
and this one will wait for a different month. And then we have Never Cry Wolf by Mar or Farley Mowat. And this one is a nonfiction about his time um, investigating the wolves. And it's one I really want to add because I've been kind of on like a conservation kick lately. And we also have Finley Donovan is Killing It, which I've heard nothing but good things about. I desperately want to get to this one, so I'm really hoping she picks this one, but really can't go wrong either way. So we're going to put this and this. Actually, so she's been going to this side. And I really want that one. We'll see if I can manifest her going to a different side. So. Release. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad I switched them. So we got Finley Donovan is killing it. Which I'm so excited for. Um, so that will be going on the list. And then next we have two books I recently hauled. Because of my mom, um, she had told me about Thorn Birds, which I've been wanting to add to my collection, and so I now have it, so I kind of want to read it, um, and I'm excited to see what she enjoyed about this one. So there's that one. And then we also have Mandarin Orange Sunday, which I got because I wasn't allowed to read this one. And so it's kind of stuck in my mind all these years. Um, and I do understand why I wasn't allowed to read it. So I want to see about reading this one too. So we'll go ahead and put that there. Word is going to fall over and scare her. There we go. All right. We've got our milk bones here. Don't fall over. Release. Okay, so she cho chose Mandarin Orange Sunday, <laughs> which I was honestly more excited for Thornbirds, but I do want to read this one, so it's it's all good. <laughs> Thornbirds can go on a different month. And then lastly for this, I have the two that my grandma gifted to me. So we have Tell Me the Truth by Kirsten Modulin and then My Husband's Daughter. I'm more interested in this one um, just based on what my grandma told me about them. So we shall see again, like I said, which one she chooses. Again, trying to manifest the other side um, from what she's chosen recently. So let's go ahead and put that and that and release. Yes. <laughs> she was very kind to me other than Mandarin Orange Sunday. So she tells Tell Me the Truth by Kirsten Modlin. Really excited to read this one. Um, I really appreciate my grandma gifting me these books. So I will definitely try to get this one on a, another TBR soon. But those are the books that Anya picked for me. So a good range here. Right. Actually, before I go finish up with Anya, I decided I wanted to do one more round with these three books. Um, I'm debating whether just to do these two because these two I were really interested in. Um, but I think I'm going to do a round with all three and see what she picks. So I think I can add one more book to my TBR easily. So uh, I really want to to try to add one of these because I'm so excited for all of them. Uh, so we're just going to do the three and just whichever one wins, that's the one that we're going to go with. So I'll put one there, one there, and one there. And release! Okay. So she chose If the Shoe Fits. So we're going to be doing two Cinderella retellings this month. But I'm really excited for this one. So yeah, I'm glad I did this round. And now I'll see you over with the whole list. All right, so I'm all finished up with Anya. And we'll go ahead and go through the list of books. There's 19 books I'm going to be talking about. Only 16 are priorities, and one of them isn't really a priority, but I'm going to be reading it first just because I want to. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and jump right in. First up is two from my 25 Days of Bookmas books. So the first one is The Serpent Bride. This is by Sarah Douglas. These, This is the first one in the Dark Glass Mountain series. So I also have 
the second one in the series, which I'm going to be reading, which this is the one that my husband and sister-in-law picked out. So I'll go ahead and read the synopsis for this one so you can kind of get an idea of what the series is about. But yeah, I'll be reading both of these this month. Um, this one's a bit chunky, but that's okay. And it says, Rescued from unspeakable horror, Ishbel Brunel has devoted her life to a serpent cult that reads the future in the entrails of its human sacrifices. But the serpent has larger plans for Ishbel than merely being archpriestess, plans that call for a dangerous royal marriage balancing on the edge between treachery and devotion, and an eerie eldritch warning, prepare for the Lord of Elko falling. There are other dangers, for while Tensindor is gone, even its fall cannot destroy the Ikari. As the tyrant of Isambard reaches for glory, both Star Drifter's Sensor and his son Axis are pulled into the deadly dance of intrigue and sorcery. The Dark Last Mountain, once known as the Threshold, is waiting, and as the Dark God Kanubai rises uh, from his prison in exile, no one will escape unscathed. So... Uh, yeah, interested to see what this series is all about. I believe it's a trilogy, but I'm not entirely certain there might be more books. But if I'm remembering right, it's just a trilogy. Um, so if I enjoy these two, obviously I'll get the last one in the trilogy. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited. I love the cover for this one. I think it's absolutely beautiful. So we'll see how those turn out. Next is another one from my ABC author, or not my ABC, my 25 Days of Book Miss books. Um, I have them all kind of separated out so I know what I need to read each month in order to complete my goal. And that is called Paint the Wind, and this is by Pam Lunas Ryan. Um, and really excited for this one. It's a horse book, so of course I think I'm going to love it. But it says, a puzzling photograph, a box filled with faded toy horses, and a single fractured memory are all that Maya has left of her mother. In grandmother's house in California, she lives like a captive, tethered by grandmother's rules. No talk of her mother, no friends, no foolishness of any kind, until a shocking event changes everything. A world away in the rugged Wyoming wilderness, a wild mustang called Artis Artismia runs free. Belonging only to the stars, in a land where mountain lions and wranglers pose an ever-present threat, she must vigilantly protect her new fold, until a devastating axe se separates them from their band. Like a braided rain, Maya and Artismia's lives will ultimately intertwine. Together, they hold the key to each other's survival. In this radiant and expansive novel, Pam Yun and Ryan walks, jogs, lopes, and gallops on new ground, her transcendent prose beating out a memorable refrain in the heart. So, um, really excited to read this one. I do for a good horse book, especially since I finished up the horse section of my Throwback Thursdays. So, next we have two of my ABC author challenge books. First up is my other N author, which is Nancy Starr. I had to do two because I went with the first name. And this is called Buried Lives. This is super short, which I'm so thankful for because I got a lot of reading to do this month. But it says, as the secrets of the past start to surface, the terror of the present, be present begins. The more she remembers, the closer she becomes comes to the horrible secret in her past and to the evil lurking in her future. All Joy really knows about her past is what her beloved brother Buddy, that her beloved brother Buddy was kidnapped when they were both very young. Now the terrifying truth is slowly creeping into Joy's seemingly perfect life. The questions about her childhood are starting to be answered, but the memories bring only fear of what she is yet to discover. So, sounds intriguing um really excited to see what this is about as well and then my other uh abc author challenge books is of course a classic so i'm excited to get to and that is 1984 by george orwell if i'm remembering right he was the author of what animal farm i want to say which i have read um but past that i haven't read anything else by him um so yeah, excited to finally read this one. And I love this cover. Um, I just think it's so stunning with the all white with the startling blue eye. Like, I think it's really cool. So excited to finally get to that one since I've never read it. And then we have one more Jim Butcher book from the Dresden Files. 
Um, I have five more books, so I decided this month to just do one of them, and then the next two months I'll do two. And so, well, I got seven more technically because I also have the two like short story collections. But we're going to be reading Ghost Story, which is the 13th book in the series. Um, so really excited to get to this one for sure, especially because I Changes was the best book of the series by far so far, and I have been getting a little bit burnt out on the series, so with Changes, like, I'm excited to see what comes next for sure. So, we'll be reading Ghost Story, and then for my Throwback Thursday, I picked two more. Again, we have more dog stories. After this, there's only two more of the dog stories, so like I said, not near as long as my horse section. Um, but first up, we are going to be reading Sounder by William H. Armstrong. I don't really know what this one is about other than like it takes place in the South and Sounder's like a hound dog. Um, so other than that, I don't know a whole lot. But, and I don't remember reading this one, but it does have some photographs, which is pretty cool. So um, but yeah, we'll be getting to this one, and it was made into a movie, which I haven't seen either. Um, but one of the blurbs says, adult and mature readers alike will find the boy's bittersweet memories a parable for our times. So, and it's winner of the John Newberry Medal. Um, but yeah, I'll be reading this one. And then the other one I'm going to be reading, which does not have a cover and has been colored on, is Jock's Island by Elizabeth Coatsworth. Again, don't really know what this one is about, other than I think there is a dog in here as well. Um, I think it's a border collie, and he kind of, like, works sheep and such, and based on the pictures. I mean, look at this illustration, though. Like, creepy, <laughs> but kind of cool, too. Um, but yeah, he, like, here we have some sheep, and so I'm... And I'm pretty sure, I do remember basically, um, I do remember reading this as a kid, but I don't really remember what it's about. Um, and so yeah, I think Jock is like set up a border collie that's helping his person with the sheep. So, um, but we will see and I'll talk more about it after I read that. So those are all the books that are definitely priorities I have to read. Next, let's go ahead and talk about the books I just want to add on, and then we'll go into Ani's picks a little bit more in depth. And so, again, I'm going to be rolling over the third book in the Etherland series, which is Mountain of Black Glass. I just haven't been able to get to this one. I did read the prologue, um, but I haven't read any more. And if I don't get to it this month, I'm not going to continue to roll it over. But I think I should be able to because I'm going to break it down like I did with my other big dense reads. Um, and I don't have any other dense ones on this list. So I should be able to to work this one in doing it how I did like The Origin by Irving Stone and The Tenants of Time um, by Thomas Flanagan. And uh, now that those ones are out of the way, I can kind of focus on this one. So I'm really hoping I can continue this one. I don't know if I'll finish it because it is so big um, and it is so dense. Uh, it's not like crazy bad. It's about 750 pages, 749 it looks like. But it, it's dense. So but I just, I the series, like the first two books are still really stuck in my mind. So I really want to get to this one. But basically, if you haven't seen me talk about the first two books in the series, it's kind of like the sci-fi fantasy s. There's this virtual reality, but it's kind of, there's this secret brotherhood that created it. And so it's not like the other virtual realities and this group kind of gets trapped there and why they're trying to investigate what's going on with the children in the real world so um they end up getting trapped in this this virtual reality world and they can't escape it and it's just so good i really want to continue it so we'll see if this is finally the month that i can do that and then of course we're going to be trying to squeeze in the rest of the tiger's curse saga this one tiger's destiny i'm gonna start today um Today that I'm filming is the last day in June. I'm going to start this. I'm going to read it right away. It's not 
too bad. It's about the same size as the first couple. So it's 443 pages, but they're young adults, so they're really easy to read. Um, and so I can knock this out, you know, probably a good chunk of it tonight and then I'll finish it off tomorrow and then I can get into my priority reads. Um, and then this one though, the fifth one is huge. It is over 800 pages, like just over 800, um, about 814. And so, but again, it's YA. And so I think I could take a couple days. Um, probably would take me about three days, three or four days to read this. Um, but I really want to get to this one too. Like I am enjoying the series so much. And then of course it just has a little novella, Tiger's Promise, which is like the prequel to the events that take place in the Tiger's Curse Saga. Um, but yeah, this one is about the, these two Indian princes that are cursed as tigers. And then you have Kelsey who comes in and she's trying to help them break the curse. And so they have to go on these quests to get these four gifts. So each book is the different quest for the different gifts. Um, and each time they get a gift, the tigers can stay as men a little bit longer. And then... There's also five sacrifices, which it really hasn't gone into yet, which I'm thinking is kind of going to come up in the fifth book. Um, and so, yeah, I'm really, really excited. And then, like I said, the Tiger's Promise is kind of the prequel. So how they ended up getting cursed in the first place. So uh, really want to get to them. So now we're going to kind of talk about our Ani picks. So she picked these books for me. You've already seen that clip. But I'll kind of go more in depth to what these books are about. So first up, we have Kai Kei by Vashnavi Patel. Um, this was up against Where the Crawdads Sing. Really wanted to read both of these. Um, Where the Crawdads Sing, I want to read before I go watch the movie, which is coming out, I believe, July 15th. But we probably won't go see it right away anyway, so I can probably put that on first thing in August, or if I have time, if I do get my reads done, I'll squeeze it in. Um, but she picked Kai Ki, which is based on an Indian epic, so it kind of goes perfectly with my Tiger Curse Saga books, which have a lot of Indian mythology in there. Um, and it follows one of the characters, Kai Ki, who is kind of seen in the epic as a villain essentially or not a good person but it's kind of her story so I've heard so many good things about this book and I'm really excited that Anya picked it for me so I can add it in and get it read um, especially why I'm on my kind of Indian theme currently so um, really excited to read that one next I wanted to add in a Nora Roberts book because I just completed my collection and I want to read and reread all the books so I picked one book that I had already read which was Midnight Bayou and then I pitted it against Genuine Lies which is one that I just hauled and I have not read even though it's older and so she obviously picked Genuine Lies and so it's about um Eve Benedict is one of the last movie goddesses and she decides she wants to write her memoirs and so she hires Julia Summers um, and then you also have Eve's elegantly sexy stepson Paul Winthrop, Winthrop who will challenge Eve's determination to tell her story and Julia's resolve to guard her heart. So really excited to read this one. Um, so I'm glad she picked that one. And then next we have... Cinder by Marissa Meyer and I pitted this against um, If the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy uh, and so she obviously picked this one which I am so excited about. I have heard mixed reviews but the people that seem to enjoy the series really enjoy it and it's basically a Cinderella sci-fi retelling. So you have human and androids crowd the raucous streets of New Beijing. A deadly plague ravages the population. From space, a ruthless lunar people watch, willing to make their move, waiting to make their move. No one knows that Earth's fate hinges on one girl. 16-year-old Cinder, a gifted mechanic, is a cyborg. She's a second-class citizen with a mysterious past and is reviled by her stepmother. But when her life becomes intertwined with the handsome Prince Kai's, she suddenly finds herself on, at the center of an intergalactic struggle 
and a forbidden attraction. Caught between duty and freedom, loyalty and betrayal, she must uncover secrets about her past in order to protect her world's future. Because there is something unusual about Cinder, something that others would kill for. So, <coughs> excuse me. Alright, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited for this. It seems different, and I'm a sucker for Cinderella retelling. Even though I really wanted to read If the Shoe Fits, but as you'll have seen, we actually got that one on here as well. So, um, yeah, we'll be reading Cinder this month. Next up, we did Finley Donovan is Killing It by Ellie L. Casamano, and I pitted this against Never Cry, Cry Wolf by Farley Moa, which I really, really did want to read this month. Um, but I'm more excited for this one, so if I get a chance, if I go through these reads really quickly, of course I'll add that one on as well, um, along with the Crawdad scene, which were the two that I wanted to add as bonus reads for June, if I was able to get to them, and so it's kind of funny that Ani didn't pick either one of those, because those were the two that, um, were like, I want to get to these in June, and if I don't, they're going on to July, um, and then she didn't choose either one. So, but like I said, if I get to Never Cry Wolf, um, if I do finish up these, I'll definitely add it on. Otherwise, we're going to be reading Finley Donovan is Killing It, which I'm honestly more excited about. I heard so many good things about this. It's quirky. It's fun. But basically, I'm not going to read the synopsis. Um, you just have Finley Donovan. And she is writing a book. And so she's talking to her agent or publicist or somebody at a restaurant and somebody overhears her talking about the plot of her book but thinks that she is a killer for hire and tries to hire her um to uh kill their their husband essentially this is the first in a series and so i'm thinking i'm gonna enjoy it and i'm definitely gonna try to pick up the rest of the series because it just sounds like such a fun time so really excited that she did pick this one so and then next, we have Mandarin Orange Sunday um, by Angelique Duran, which I pitted this against Thorn Birds, which is by Colleen McCullough. And yeah, these were two from my mom, well, inspired by my mom. Thorn Birds, she had told me about, and I was really excited to pick it up. And this one she had when I was growing up. And it was the only one of her books she told me I was not allowed to read. <laughs> and so I've always been intrigued by it. It's definitely a bit vulgar, uh, very crude, a lot of cursing, um, a lot of spice in here. So now that I'm an adult, I'm excited that I can read this. So <laughs> uh, really excited to do this one. And then we'll be um, reading Thorn Birds at a later date. But it says, Selene is outrageous, rich, beautiful, brainy, and very, very sensual. She does what she wants, when she wants to, and with whom she wants. Yes, any time, any place, yours or hers, until she meets the one man who's worth mu more, much more than just a one-night stand. So, and then the big letters says, she's the juiciest heroine of the year and the sexiest novel of the century. Um, and as far as I know, this is Angelique Duran's only novel, um, and it is kind of rare as well, so I'm excited to finally read this one for sure. So, next we have, um, let's see, this one is, my grandma had given me two books, my mother's, or my husband's daughter, which I forget who that one's by, but I'll put the name here. I pitted that one against Tell Me the Truth by Kirsten Modulin, and Ani picked this one, which is the one I was more interested in, so I was really, really happy that she did that. And this one, basically, this woman finds photos of a mysterious woman on her husband's phone. The heartbreaking implications were all too familiar, and at Edith sets out to discover her identity. What starts as a desperate search for answer quickly becomes a terrifying spiral of obsession and subterfuge, 
With each new secret uncovered about her life, her marriage, and the man she loves, Edith is left with even more questions. What exactly is Joe hiding? Who is a woman in this, his photos? Refusing to accept Joe's lies any longer, Edith soon finds herself living a double life, telling lies and keeping secrets of her own when she uncovers a final piece of the puzzle, something darker and more gut-wrenching than even she could have anticipated. Edith is forced to make a choice about the future of her marriage. So... Uh, sounds like a good time, and my mother, or my mother, my grandmother told me all about it, <laughs> and so I'm really, really excited to read this one. And then I decided, so those are the books that won, um, and I decided there was two books that I really, really wanted to get on to the TBR, which was Where the Crawdads Sing, and then If the Shoe Fits, and so I decided to do an extra round with those books and Midnight Bayou by Nora Roberts, just to see if I could maybe add that one on as well. And Ani picked If the Shoe Fits by Julie Murphy. Uh, and so I'll be reading this one as well. So I'll have two Cinderella retellings um, this month. But I'm just so excited for this one. And I'm kind of in the mood for some contemporary, like, just light and fun reads. So... We'll be reading this one as well. Uh, but that is all the books on my TBR. I am so excited. Um, we'll kind of hold up each stack. So we have these ones here, which I'm really excited for. Then we have these ones. And the little novellas hidden in there as well. Um, which again, super excited for those. Like I'm obsessed with that right now. Tad Williams, Otherland, hopefully, fingers crossed, I can work that in as well. And then we have um, this, these ones here, which are all the top priority reads for the month, which this stack alone is quite chunky, but I think we will be successful. The only one I'm kind of worried about, like I said, is... Otherland by Tad Williams, but we'll see what we can do. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys here. If you have read any of these books, if you're interested in any of these books, let me know down below, and happy reading, everyone. Bye.